Hello everyone, you welcome to this edition of the Inside on Equinox Television. I am Babla Jonathan. In this edition of the program, we're going to be talking about President Paul Beer's decision to liberate 289 detainees of the Anglophone crisis persons arrested and detained in connection to the Anglophone crisis in different incarceration centers across the country. They have already been uh, set free according to the instructions coming from the Ministry of uh, Defense and in a communique published by the Minister Delegate at the Presidency in Charge of Defense, Joseph Petit, uh, some more indicated that the presidential decision does not concern those he qualified as criminals, assassins, dangerous terrorists, and persons who planned and masterminded the security uh, crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions of the country will also be talking about how the disarmament uh, commission or committee created by the president of the republic with former governor Fayengo francis as the president of that a commission with three members can help to solve the anglophone crisis is that commission coming at the appointed time is it coming uh, to solve the anglophone crisis and uh, of course we'll be looking at this with a legal mind meet our guests in some few seconds. Our guest in this edition of the uh, program is Barista Limen Nkamwa. He is the a barista, a legal mind member of the Cameroon Bar Association and of course the owner of the Kamwa Limen Law Firm. Barista, you're welcome. Thank you so much. You followed the liberation of uh, 289 uh, persons. When you heard that news for the first time, uh, what was your reaction? How did you feel? Well, like uh, every good person of good faith, I, it was a relief to me that uh, some Anglophones were to be released and uh, it was it's a good thing to gain back freedom. But at the same time, I received it with a lot of mixed feeling. Mixed feeling in the sense that <laughs> I don't know where they're going back to. Because we know, we know for sure that the Northwest and Southwest, the situation there is very, very bad. That one would even think that people in the prisons are, are better secured than those outside. So um, if uh, they were released and and the atmosphere is really peaceful, it will make a lot of sense to me. In other words, they, they have been set free, but their homes are still in trouble, their families are still in trouble, their villages, uh, some of them are probably coming from the villages that have been deserted, burned down, everything destroyed. So the liberation uh, will not uh, make some sense? Uh, when you say some of them, uh, that the villages of some of them are burned down. I want to correct that statement because every village in the Northwest and Southwest has, has been affected by the crisis. Every part of Southwest and Northwest have been affected. Yes, I was saying in essence that get, getting your freedom is one thing and going back to face the challenges you meet is another thing. And in my humble opinion, I think that uh, their rights, they, they, they have a right to their, to their freedom but I keep, I am really worried, extremely worried, when I think of what is going to happen there. What next? Now, 289 persons, and this is the second time the President of the Republic is uh, using his uh, uh, powers according to uh, the provisions of the, of, the, uh, of the Military Court of Justice or the military... It's the provisions uh, of the Constitution that gives him right. the power to, to grant pardon. Uh, and and he's, he has released 289 yes. uh, persons out of the thousands who are in different prisons across the country. Yeah, it is, it is worrisome. And uh, when I read the, the communique or the, the, the release from, from the Secretary General of the Presidency, he mentioned that uh, there were people involved, people who committed uh, simple offenses daily, as we call it. And the question I was asking myself is, how then do they classify this offense? Because when you look at the, the purpose, right, the purpose of what happened, they said they were, they were terrorists. And we know that terrorists are, <laughs> they, 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 they are 
they commit felonies, not misdemeanors, not not misdemeanors. Beg your pardon, yeah, misdemeanors. Now, the question I want to ask is, if they contributed, if they contributed in any aspect in committing the offense that's being classified today and made the difference between them and Ayuktabi and others as felony, how then do they transform and classify that as misdemeanor? It's problematic. And I think that... Misdemeanor has been handled by the military courts? Of course, the military court can handle misdemeanor because military crimes are, are equally classified like uh, the civil crimes, the, the crimes that are committed by civilians. We have uh, the misdemeanor, and which is daily, and we have the, the felony, which is crime, a crime to them. So, if they were accused of terrorism, it means therefore that they must have acted or done something to the commission of that offense. And that offense per se is a crime. So how then do you classify what they did as misdemeanor and then you classify the others as crimes to make them to 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 to, to make, a make some to make a distinction from who can benefit from that freedom. So I think uh, at the level of classification I think there's something there's something political and I think um, the number is actually insignificant. Then one would like to ask and to know that why were they arrested to be released after What's the reason? It's not the first time. It's not the first time. So what has changed? What has actually changed for them to be released? Nothing has changed. We still have problems. We still have looting, killings, and uh, nothing has actually changed. So why do we come and say, look, if the president wants to do something right, he should do it outrightly right. Now, looking at the impact of this uh, decision, uh, the first time was in August 2017, yes. Yes. when um, Dr. Fontaine Neba, Mr. Abobala Ayapola Bini, and over 70 others were uh, set free, and the crisis continued deepening. Yes. And the call for the liberation of those who are still in jail, notably leaders like Mancho BBC and others, yes. continue rising to the sky. Yes. And now, uh, close to one year, four months later, uh, the President of the Republic comes up and liberates 289, and there are still thousands. And the leaders are not concerned by this uh, decision of the President of the Republic. What impact could this have on the crisis? I don't think it's going to have any significant impact. It's not going to have. When you arrest, when they, you, have, you have more than 2,000 persons, if I'm not wrong, locked up and you come and release 289, it does not make sense. It's not going to change anything. If we want, if he wants uh, to change the situation, okay, liberate the people, liberate all the detainees, including the leaders, and then you call now for a dialogue. Let us talk. It does not make sense, honestly, it doesn't make sense. There have been uh, calls for general amnesty, uh, liberation of everybody, but the President of the Republic says, no, we're going to liberate this number, and uh, some cannot be set free according to the release of the minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense and that release in the last paragraph qualified those who can who are not part of that presidential decision as uh, criminals as assassins as dangerous terrorists and so on look when you look at the people were <laughs> abducted from from nigeria seseko and the others can you tell me at any material moment what they, what they physically did in this community? They were never, they were, they were never seen with guns. They were never seen shooting or doing anything. They made statements, calling on the people to, to, they, they sold their, their, their ideology to, to, to sympathizers. Now the people who were arrested in Cameroon probably were arrested because they committed, they did something. How then? Do you, do you separate the person who said something and the person who actually did something and then you separate them and say one is a felony and the other one is, is misdemeanor? I think there's a problem at that level. But the justification that will probably come from government will uh, say uh, those who mastermind it because these are also some of the words that are mentioned in the release of the minister uh, uh, delegate at the president's in charge of look, defense that they plant and mastermind it even though it did not no, mention let, names let me tell you something there is what we call complicity complicity 
complicity, which is punishable. Eh? The, 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 the accomplice is punishable as a man of honor. So, if they accuse the, the leaders for terrorism and it's, it's a crime, then anybody who, who, in one way or the other, did something or prepared or facilitated the commission of that offense must be punished as a principal offender. And therefore, if they were accused of terrorism, complicity to terrorism, how then does it change from a criminal of, to, to, to um, how then does it change from a felony to misdemeanor for them to be released? Why do other people are still classified as, as a terrorist and, and, uh, and not, not, uh, cannot gain the privileges done by the head of state? I think there's a problem at choosing classification of that offense. There is a problem. No, classifying um, names are not mentioned anywhere. Classifying uh, others as dangerous terrorists, no, no, when, criminals, when, when, look, assassins. It, yes, when the courts it, have not judged and condemned them. What I'm saying is that. You, how what, do you look at that what as, I'm a, as a legal that, mind? What, what I'm saying is that offenses are classified. We have simple misdemeanor and, and uh, felonies. Now, Everybody was arrested on, uh, in this anglophone crisis. All of them were termed terrorists. And terrorists uh, is, is felonious offense, as per the law. And so when you arrest these people and arrest some of the people actually did, that you think actually committed or did an action to facilitate the commission of the offense, how then do you separate from felony to misdemeanor, and you say these people committed misdemeanor and this felony. I think there's a problem at that, at, at that level. So As a legal man, it is not the name that we see. It is offense. It is an offense of which you are accused that classify if it's felony or misdemeanor or a simple offense. Now, from um, what we know, as lay people, as far as the law is concerned, we are not legal minds, but we know that uh, when somebody is uh, arrested, suspected of having committed a crime, it, it remains uh, a suspect. Yes. And you cannot uh, qualify that person as a thief, but a suspected thief, no, the, uh, or an the, alleged thief. The so way, when you talk about suspect, you are it's still under investigation of the police and the gendarmes that's that's where you have the legal status of a suspect once you're in court you are not, you are accused you're, you're accused. an accused person yes now when uh, those who are in court yes. they are being described as terrorists assassins dangerous terrorists and so on where this legally people, speaking where these other people not in court too? legally speaking is it yes. right to give them those attributes of course that is what they accuse them that's the accusation it does not mean that they are, but the legal department has to bring, has to bring the culprits and what they are being accused, has to bring the persons or the accused persons and state what the, on what grounds are the, 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 the accusation is based. So it is normal to say that this man is, uh, he has been brought charged for this offense. It is normal. All right. But at the level of investigation, the current investigation, to be able to ascertain what offense has been committed. And when he gets now to court, when they establish the kind of offense that has been committed, it will now it will now determine the courts. Is it a court of first instance? Is it a high court? Or is it a military tribunal? And when he gets there now, he gets there with the accusation, the charges. Now, why do you think that the liberation of these detainees will not have any impact on the crisis? Uh, are those detain it is it is really significant that number is insignificant and secondly there is a fundamental issue that if you don't solve if you don't resolve that issue if you don't solve the problem as you liberate many more will enter and it is proven and you know that after Avobala and the others were released many more people have been locked up so in the first uh, number of persons released 
Maybe I don't know how many people released when Abu Bala and the others were released. Yeah, over seventy-five. Of them. Over seventy-five. They believe they know that about a thousand or more who went back went back to prison. So what does it change when you take when you remove two hundred eighty-five um, accused persons? You, you you grant them freedom, and then tomorrow because from today even they might still be arresting people again now to send to the prisons. So what does it change? It is important. It is important to to address the issues. It is important. If you don't address those issues, they come back. It can't spark people. The, 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 the belligerents, the fighters will still continue to fight because the, the, the issue at stake has not been redressed. So it is good that as you release the people, make steps to redress the fundamental issues. Now, some critics think that the people who have been released uh, certainly there's no debate about this. Everybody, like you indicated earlier, has a right to freedom, has a right to be set free, and should be set free according to uh, what you're saying and what the calls that have been coming from the civil society generally demanding for general amnesty. But the, 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 the caliber of those who have been released is a problem, considering the fact that those who are considered as the leaders, those who are considered as uh, opinion uh, leaders who can talk and the others listen are not concerned by this uh, presidential decision, notably Sisiku, Ayutabi and the others. Even BBC, we shouldn't forget that it's much of BBC was already condemned. Uh, to me, it's a window dressing. The liberation is just maybe to satisfy international uh, pressure, maybe to win some good faces somewhere. It is insignificant and we should not rejoice that hey, people were, most of them were illegally illegally locked up. To be very honest, most of them were illegally locked up. So you should not rejoice that some people were illegally locked up as we released. We should not. They regained their freedom that was seized illegally. And there are many more persons in that situation. However, those who have been released uh, will be celebrating by now and, and of course their families. Yeah, it is a good thing to gain freedom. It is a good thing to gain freedom. And those who, some persons were at the uh, Bamenda military court, but they went home disappointed because their relatives were not released. Okay, let me, let me draw your attention to something which is very interesting. That a decision came out just a few days ago, about two, two days ago. Yeah. And people have been released yesterday. Don't you think that the ground war was done before the decision came out? The time within which the time frame within which the, the ground came out. What do you mean by the ground work? <laughs> it means therefore that it has been in the corridor that okay, let us select some of these few people, bring their names, and let us know them and release them. Because a decision cannot come out two days after and those people are being released are even taken back to Bamena. Twenty four hours. Twenty four hours. You see, so it is something that was in the pipeline. They selected those those that they could select and sent them back home. So, wow. so, are you saying that it's kind of a uh, political... Of course, I won't, I, won't, I won't hide to say that it is. It is. It is. And every, every intelligent, honest person will tell you that it is. But the communique of the, or the release of the Secretary General of the President indicated that this is a, a, a clear um, demonstration of President Paul Bier's will not to... Do you know something? You, you, you this problem and so wait and say the head of state has done this, the head of state. It is not the way it comes when it comes to things that are poorly done. Nobody says that the head of state is responsible for doing this. They only give credit to him that he has done this, as he said, he has done this. The first issue to ask is why were they there? Why were they locked up? What happened that this problem, this same head of the state who is releasing people now, where was he when this all these things they, they were, all these things were happening? He could arrest the situation. He could arrest the situation. A president should not be so proud that cannot talk to his people. A father cannot be so proud to his own children. So we will we'll mix up things, we we'll mix up things and then they start giving you the, the tips and the pieces and you start calling names and thanking people. You thank them for what? Now, um, since the uh, first set of persons arrested in connection to this crisis were set free in August 2017. The crisis has deepened further, has uh, grown from worse to worse. And now another set of persons 
practically close to triple of the number that was uh, set free in August 2017 have been set free again. What is going to happen next? What can we uh, foresee? Nothing, nothing is going to happen. In my opinion, in my analysis, nothing is going to change. Because, you see, at one moment, it shows kind of weakness from the part of the government instead. When you look at it and say it's something wonderful, the head of the it, to me, it's, it, it's, it's a sign of weakness that we can come and arrest people, give them some names, lock them, then after this pressure, we release them. So any other person who is committing offense knows that tomorrow I can go there and the president will ask that they should be released. If you want to be serious, let us be serious. Don't arrest people that you know that tomorrow you're going to, to release them. Dialogue with your people. Solve issues before they get off hands. Releasing 2,289 persons, what does it change? The caliber of persons released in the first, the, the, the first release was more, more, more significant than, than what is happening. You have Dr. Fontenbu, who is a veteran doctor. You have um, uh, Barrister Agbobala. You have uh, Justice, Ayabu, Justice Ayabu. Ayabu. Those are people of, but nothing changed. Then, now they just released some people that we've not had any leader, no opinion leader, and then you think, well, what is going to change? It's not going to change. If, if, you want to solve, if you want to solve the problem, you solve the problem. All right, uh, Barrister, we're going to take a short break. Uh, time for us to take a look at what the newspapers reported this week. The Press Review by For Me Armstrong. Sander. Thank you for staying with us, ladies and gentlemen. This edition, the post Monday, December 10, quoted Sisiko Ayuk Tabe and co Ambazonian leaders at the Yawunde Military Court. We are Ambazonians, not Cameroonians. The star same Monday, we are not Cameroonians. The son quoted government hand picked witnesses against Sisiko and co, saying, I don't even know Sisiko. What will I tell the court? The Rambler newspaper said witnesses against Sisiko and others embarrassed. The Horizon said AGC conveners organized referendum for Northwest and Southwest people. Eden newspaper focused on her anglophone crisis hits hard on palm oil production sector. The Voice scars of Fumban. Aijo wanted no smoking guns. After the election at Feka Food, the Guardian Post said Sedum Bombonjoya crushes bell to image Feka Food president. The Post Weekender Mbombonjoya wins Feka Food election amid bell ito wrangling. Also on the Post Weekender, World Bank indicts Cameroon for inflating costs of projects. While the Guardian Post wraps up the week, Bia takes major steps towards ending Anglophone crisis, orders release of 289 detainees in connection to Northwest Southwest. You're welcome back. We are still with our guest, Barrister Kamwa Limen, member of the Cameroon. Bar Association and owner of the Kamwali Men Law Firm here in the Economic Capital Douala. Now, Barista, uh, the decision of the head of state to liberate 289 detainees of the Yangli Fund crisis came on the wake of the establishment of uh, the disarmament, demobilization, and the reintegration uh, committee led by former governor Fai Yenko Francis. This is still uh, part of the uh, efforts by government to solve this crisis and this committee is charged with disarming, demobilizing and reintegrating into normal life the pro-independence fighters uh, in the northwest and southwest regions as well as some Cameroonians who joined the Nigerian terrorist sect uh, Boko Haram. Uh, what's your take on this other uh, action taken by President Paul Bia with regards to efforts to solve the Anglophone crisis? It's comedy, that's why I was laughing when you were talking. It's, com it's a comedy show. How do you create a committee for disarmament when people are fighting? Who is going to disarm who? How do you create a committee 
to to resettle uh, displaced persons and uh, people who surrendered weapons when when they are still fighting. It is not practical. It is funny. The head of state in his inaugural speech uh, called on the pro-independence fighters to drop their guns. Okay, let them drop. Then the committee takes over. The committee does not proceed. The and dropping of weapons. And the authorities have been saying, drop your guns, come of out course. of the bush, we're going to receive you, have take care dropped? of you, have protect they you, and so on. Have they dropped? You're a journalist, I'm a lawyer, you inform us, have, have they dropped? And do you think they're going to drop? We have received some information. That they've dropped? Saying that uh, some people are already... <laughs> okay. Uh, if, <laughs> we if don't know, coming if, from government, but we have not seen the people. All of, us, all, of us, we, all of us, we want peace. Nobody benefits from the fight. But... We need honesty. We need kind of honesty and frankness to resolve the issue in this country. And you see, Mr. Babila, I refuse to think that I am less of a Cameroonian than others. Or others are more Cameroonians than me. I don't. I don't accept that. And therefore, it is in my, or it is in my powers to say things freely and frankly. Those people are fighting for a cause. They are fighting for a cause. Now, why is there, why are they fighting? Because there's no dialogue. When is there conflict? Be because people disagree. And what do they do? What do they do to, 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 to solve conflicts? We get into conflict resolution. And one party is saying that I cannot even talk with them because they are nobody. And later you ask them that since they are nobody, they should drop their arms and come and go and meet the committee. Does it make sense to you? If it does to you, it does not make sense to me. Are you saying that the committee is not uh, timely? It's not coming at the right time? It's not, it's it not coming. Be created it's not coming at the right time. And the choice of person heading that committee. When should the committee uh, be, when, when should it be created? Okay. Open up dialogue. Start dialoguing with the leaders. And then you say, okay, I've equally created this committee that as we are discussing and you're asking your people to disarm, they are receiving these people and rehabilitate them. It makes sense. You see, there is a step for negotiation and there's negotiation going on and we start seeing that parties, the belligerents are coming to peace and then there's a, com there's a committee that is made up. And do you know something? The committee should not be made up by only by government appointees. Are you saying that that committee uh, will not succeed in its mission? <laughs> Which other committee has succeeded? Because of the environment, because of, of the timing, because of the yes, uh, yes. The, 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 the fact that there are people who are fighting. Uh, you want to disarm time. people who are not willing to, to be, to be disarmed. How do you do it? You go and fight to disarm them. They picked up arms, which is wrong. I'm not saying that it is right to pick up arms. But they picked up arms. And they say, we have a problem. You say you don't want to discuss their problems. It got worse. And then you create a committee and say that, they should, that this committee should disarm this committee to, for, for the disarmament of those who are fighting. And it does not make sense to me. It does not make sense. So uh, the people who are in the bushes, government authorities, uh, saying that... Uh, Drop your guns, come, we're going to receive you, uh, we'll treat you well, we'll protect you, and we'll reintegrate you into the normal life train. Are you saying that they're not going to believe this message from government? All those points you've listed, are they one of the points that made them to go to the bush? They were free before they went to the bush. They were settled before they went to the bush. They could have their, 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 their daily jobs and have some money before they went to the bush. There is a fundamental problem. There is a fundamental problem. So, would that be coming back that, that what took them to the bush has been resolved? It does not make sense. It does not make sense. They went there for a purpose. You cannot just ask them, drop your guns and come and meet this committee. Bring your guns and give this person and then you are reintegrated to the society. It does not really make sense to me. Uh, and a civil society leader told me if um, a Supreme Court judge like Aya Paul Abini is arrested and detained for hundreds of days, uh, more than a hundred days, uh, uh, incommunicado without any charge leveled against him. And now 
you asking uh, separatist fighters to leave the bush and come out, uh, how are they going to be sure that when they come out of the bush, they won't be arrested? You see, what is what is even uh, what makes me laugh more is those places don't even have security. They don't have security. Start can they disarm the military? Because the military is part of the fight, the, the constitute part of the fighting forces, and we know we know for sure that some people, some men of God, bishops have testified to the fact that even the military kills, right, randomly. So, what, what the whole thing is so complicated, Mr. Babila. Right, Barrister, so we we're going to take interviews of the week, and uh, during the last editions of the program, we've been. Uh, working on a series on the way out of this uh, crisis. So when we come back, we're going to take a look at what I want to call uh, Barista Kamwa's own way out of this crisis. I'll be fine. Stay with us. I don't have the exact figure. But I know that there are more than 1,500 anglophones in all the jails around the country. Uh, 289, I don't know where they got, got that from. But uh, the most important thing is that if all the anglophones are not released, nothing has happened. Nothing has happened because this struggle is bigger than one man or a group of people. Uh, this government doesn't seem to understand what is going on. The Northwest and Southwest, that the Southern Cameroon has a grievance, a serious grievance of 57 years. As long as they are not willing to deal with that, releasing a part of Anglophone, just like they released Abubala and the, the, the Dr. Niba, releasing a few people will not solve anything. I can tell you right now, there's no impact. Well, because they, because uh, out of one th more than 1,500 people you released, 289, uh, how, what was the criteria? And uh, there is something that I don't understand as a lawyer. Misdemeanors are not handled by the military tribunal. The military tribunal handles felonies. So when he did talk about releasing people who have committed misdemeanors, must misdemeanors be handled by the military tribunal? Uh, so what, what was the criteria? And not only that, he, everybody is important. Just like I said before, no one man is bigger than this struggle. If it's a step forward before December, he finishes releasing everybody, fair and good. But for now, we have nothing to rejoice about. There's nothing to, to rejoice about. There's nothing, Jonathan, there's nothing. Uh, just that the families that have been released are good. Okay, who is to assure their security anyway? They can be released and gone down somewhere on their way home. How would you know? So uh, the war is on, and you release people. You don't release all the people. You release a certain a few people, and you expect uh, uh, the certain Cameroonians to be jumping that you have released people. If he wants to solve this problem, he should release everybody, call for ceasefire, and we'll get on the negotiating table. I'm the lead counsel for, for Ayuktabe and nine others as of now. And they are not only the only ones uh, that, were, that were kidnapped from Nigeria and brought here. There are another 37 in said. I'm not concerned by this decree. And uh, the leaders who are supposed to be sitting on the table with La Republic du Cameroon are in jail. So what, what, what game is Mr. Bia playing? He will be talking with whom? It's a step in the right direction, but he has to go just beyond the, the disarmament, the bilingualism commission, the release of people. They have to address the fundamental issues, and I think the fundamental issue is a form of a state. Nobody should pretend. I think that uh, the head of state in his quest to appease the Anglophone Cameroonian should continue to do more because we know that there are many who are still there under the same circumstances. So today the number of 14, though small, we welcome it and we pray that he continues using that his fatherly heart to stop persecutions against the, the, other, the other accused who had stayed in jail. 14, there are more than that in Douala. We all we appreciate, but we are asking for more because many of the Anglophone youth are still in detention. 
And uh, I want to think that the president is a father and uh, we are calling on him to do more so that peace is going to return to our darling nation. It is my belief that as judicial authorities are echoing this, it is not only the head of state who is thinking about peace, it is not only the commission or the committee that is in charge of peace, it is all of us in the society. Peace is a collective endeavor. I came here expecting that my brother would be amongst those who were released, or those who would be released, but unfortunately, uh, out of the number and the faces I saw here, it was not there. So I'm living very sad. And I want to keep passing the message that if others have benefited from what the head of state has done to others, it should equally extend to others who are still in prison. Can I have just one commission in Cameroon that has ever come up with the results to say, we went, we discussed this, we discovered this, and this is what, and the head of state said, yes, please let us resolve this thing this way. To detoxify them, and get them come back fit in society is a project that the government needs to study and put people to do this. More so, who declared the war? You cannot declare a war. People have died from both sides, yes. And today you come tell me that Amber boys put down their guns and your soldiers are there following them and killing, burning places. From both camps they destroyed the economy of the north southwest and today we are having a new phenomenon where we are reliably told that uh, people high up in government have their own camps they set fire on my compound here they set fire they destroyed my whole compound in the village the most important for all cameroonians and for this commission i think is a return to a state of normalcy uh, returning to a state of normalcy where People live without fear of being attacked at any moment. Uh, there are parts of this country in which there is rampant killing, there's warfare going on, and uh, we only pray that the call for disarmament could be, and, and the practice of that disarmament could be effective. And uh, uh, concerning the, that uh, disarmament, the mobilization and rehabilitation, we think that if that disarmament, demobilization and the rehabilitation is done in a spirit of reconciliation, that will be good. In this, the spirit of reconciliation will be seen if those who obey the call and come back are treated the way that we've heard leading authorities saying that when they come back they will be treated properly, they will be protected, they will not be harassed and if it is done in that spirit of reconciliation then we think that the criticism of concerning the timing, concerning sequencing, whether we should come before what does not really matter uh, if people cooperate and we come back to a state of normalcy that will be good for everybody conference that uh, Cardinal Toomey and the other prelates were advocating for is a thing I support. We have to start talking somewhere. At one time they accused me that I was talking to Ambazonians. They called me on my phone nearly every other day and I talked to them. I would like to, to thank my, my colleagues, delegates who has put in uh, all their, their will on me, their confidence on me. I really appreciate that. That's a sign that uh, all along this campaign, I have managed to convince them, convince them on what is, what, how necessary it is for us together to go to the change man. Because after five years, five years of crisis, enough is enough. We have now uh, to do our best to. Um, rebuild and reconstruct our uh, football and uh, to professionalize football, change the governance and believe me, first thing to put the, the ethics on the, on the, on the first uh, point, on the first, uh, and reevaluate the, the, the ethics, which is very important because you know 
we have turned our back to the to ethics for long. I hope that the newly elected president and the executive that is coming in will do an even better job to make it such that um, um, fraudulent elections are a thing, of, a thing of the past. And I invite the president of the republic, I invite uh, Elekam, I invite the president of the Senate National Assembly and all the major stakeholders uh, to come and see what Fikafut is doing here. Uh, Fikafut will not be Fikafut if we didn't adopt a federal constitution. Fikafut will not be Fikafut if we didn't have the single ballot. Fikafut will not be Fikafut today if we didn't have a two-round election. For a very long time, the Southwest has been going downwards. I want to mention here that uh, the Southwest has a new executive, as you rightly know, and uh, we have as regional president, uh, Mr. Ndive. And so we are very confident that the Southwest will come out of the darkness because we have a very dynamic team in place that knows what football needs. And uh, so uh, those delegates decided that, um, well, the delegates at the regional uh, General Assembly decided that we will come to the Federal Assembly and uh, here we are and we're trying to bring the most we can back to our region. The emergency operating health center is not a hospital, it's not emergency care, it's a place where you have the surveillance of the national territory through the different chef of district, half district. That is the place where uh, uh, 24 hours by 24 hours, we are in contact with all, all 200 districts that you have in the national territory. And uh, we can uh, intervene very, very fastly. It's important for our system because you know that outbreak uh, don't respect uh, the, fro the, the border of territory. It's important when you have a problem in uh, another country, for example, Ebola in the Republic of Congo, it's important for us to localize the, with precision the place where it is and we see uh, what you have to do in Cameroon to protect our border. EOC is not a place where you have uh, a bed. For hospitalization, you don't have consultations or you have a laboratory, not. It's only the place, it's a headquarters of surveillance in the national territory to organize a repose when you have a, a big accident. Curie can send ambulances, but from this place, you can see the place where you have accident because with this place, we will have a, the, a network with satellites and you can see exactly what you have to do, and you organize Curie to have a good response on the field. It's a, a place where you have the control of the event, and you, you have several cameras you, you can follow, and you, regard, uh, you organize the response on the field. Those were interviews of the week, and we're running up this edition of the program with our series on the way out of the crisis. Barista Kamwa Limen, where is the door out of the troubled waters? Uh, settled in peace. We need peace, we need dialogue. Nothing more, nothing less. Look, we have people, we have aggrieved presence. Anglophones have their problems. I agree that equally, Francophones equally have problems. The whole of this country has problems. But Anglophones, by their culture, have come out with their grievances. Okay, they started solving these grievances. And the problems are, however, not the same. Discrimination yes. that the uh, Anglophone uh, population um, crying against it's not the same problem. You see, you, you see, I think the problem is that of mentality and culture. Because the Francophones equally have a lot of problems. But they are always, they are always docile. They are always, they are always accept things the way they are. Whereas in our Anglophone culture, we don't accept. 
That is that's it. That's it. That's, that's the fundamental difference between us. If an anglophone is not better off than a francophone, a francophone is not better off than an anglophone. But anglophones, we we've seen what is good. We know what is good, and we think that we can have what is good. That is the fundamental difference between us. And so the way out. The way out is know? that the government should realize that is they are dealing with people with their culture, with their vision. People who want to be identified. People who want to, to, to determine their, 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 their future. And people think that the system has failed. That is it. And since the system has failed from when we became united, they feel that, some feel that federalism is the best thing to have some, a kind of autonomy. Extremists feel that to succeed is the best thing. Me, if you ask my opinion, I'm in for a federal, I'm in for federation. And every other anglophone, look, if we take 100, we say the entire anglophone population is 100. Not up to 10 will tell you that they want to maintain the present status quo. So the game is between 90%. The, the game is between the, 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 the faction that constitutes 90%. What do they want? Federalism or to it? And I don't want to make pronouncement on what can, can carry, but I know that with dialogue, with dialogue, we can come to a consensus. And you think federalism can solve the problem? Of course, it's going to solve the problem. How is it going to solve the problem? It is a step to to to, to have a, to, to a step a step that guarantees our autonomy, kind of autonomy that what we what we criticize, the kind of uh, administration we criticize in the French system, we're going to practice something different. We don't want system where they will appoint uh, a government delegate to control mayors who are who are voted by by the population. And you see the consequences. Go to Lock Pong, look at the roads. Everything is nonsense because there is one person that has to give a decision for a road to be graded. When we come to many other things, even at the jury, the, the, the setting of the courts, go and visit the courts in the northwest, southwest, and visit the courts in, in, uh, in the francophone zones. Even the way they sit is different. In our court system, the state council, the lawyers, and the, the, the the court registrars, we sit on the same table, right? It gives you the, the impression, it gives you the notion, which is right, that a state council and a lawyer are the same. They are. He is a lawyer for the state, and, now, and we are lawyers for the defense. We are the same. But when you come here, you see that the, the state council sits somewhere else, the president and then the lawyers, they sit somewhere else, and gives them the impression that they are bigger than lawyers. So, when you take some of those small things, those trivial things, you discover that the system is quite different. And Anglophones just one. We want a system where we can implement what we know best. Thanks so much, Barista Limen of the Kamwa Limen Law Firm here in the Economic Capital. Douala, you are a lawyer and member of the Cameroon Bar Association. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us in this edition of The Insight. Take the appointment for next Sunday. Another edition will be coming up. Goodbye.